Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others who want to test their math skills with these types of test questions. So this will be our 36th part in the series and what we have going on here is that we have to determine the area of the orange circle with center C. So we have to, not the area, we have to determine the diameter of this orange circle here. And we were told a couple pieces of information that AP, this blue arc is a semicircle. This other one from P to B is also a semicircle. And the large black line across here is also a semicircle. And we have dimensions shown here from this first semicircle has a diameter of 10 inches, and then P to B has a diameter of 20 inches, meaning that the overall semicircle has a diameter of 30 inches. So what we're going to do in order to solve for the diameter of circle C is that we are going to draw in some extra pieces of information here. So we are going to connect all centers of the three semicircles to the center of the circle C. So I'm going to have my first center right here. I'm going to call that X. I'm going to have my second center over here for P to B, and we're going to call that Z. And then I'm going to have my third, which will be the center for the largest semicircle, and we're going to call that Y. And what we're going to do is that we are going to connect these to the center of C here. So I am going to connect this in here. We're going to form a bunch of triangles here. So there's one line. Here's another line connecting in to Y. And these are supposed to be nice and straight lines, of course. And then we have another line connecting in from Z to the center of C there. So let's throw on some dimensions here. And... We will have five inches here. We will have five inches here. This over here from Z to B is 10 inches. And then since this is 10 inches over here and Y is directly in the center for 15 and 15, that means that this is also five inches based upon the dimensions here and here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to have here is I'm gonna have this unknown portion of this um, line here from C to the edge of its circle. And I'm just going to call that R for the radius of my circle C. So once I have the radius, I can get my diameter. So this portion right here of this line X to C will be um, five inches. This one over here from C down to Z, this portion will be 10 inches because it's the radius of the semicircle. But for the Y portion, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to extend this line upward and this will be R as well. So the line from C to Y then will be the total radius of the semicircle subtracting R instead of adding to R. So let's go ahead and write all that information out. So based upon the picture and the dimensions, CX, which will be my first one that I drew, will simply be five plus the radius of the orange circle. And then I will have CY, which will be 15 minus R, so it's the radius of the entire circle, or semicircle, the large one, which is 15, and then subtracting off R to get back to the center. And then I will have CZ, which will be 10 plus R. So 10 inches to get it to the edge, and then another R to get it to the center. So let's also add in some other dimensions here. So X to Y will simply just be 10 inches, and then XZ will be 15 inches just by the dimensions that were given at the start. So how does this help us? Well, we're going to utilize the triangles that are forming here with my dashed lines. And we're going to also utilize this angle right here with regards to X, and we're going to relate these triangles together. So the triangles we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at triangle X, C, Y, which will be X, up to C and down to Y, so this first one right here. And we will also be looking at the triangle X, C, and Z. So the larger one along the outside. So each one of those, those two triangles share this angle here. They share this line of CX. So we're gonna be utilizing those properties of sharing between those two triangles to figure out what my radius is. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use the law of cosines for each of these triangles to see if we can solve for anything. So utilizing the law of cosines for my first triangle, which will be my X to C to Y. So utilizing the first one, which I'm just gonna label as one. 
<clears throat> since CY is opposite the angle that I'm targeting here, which I'm just going to call this angle CXY. So it will be CY squared is equal to CX squared plus XY squared <clears throat> minus off to CX XY and then cosine of that angle CXY. So that would be my utilizing the law of cosines for that very first left triangle. And we already have some dimensions, of course, in terms of R here for our unknown. So let's go ahead and dump these values in here. So we would end up here with 15 minus R squared is equal to five plus R squared plus 10 squared, subtracting off two times 10 times five plus R, and then, of course, cosine of our unknown angle CXY. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of unknowns here going on. Can't really solve for anything directly, but what we can do is we can simplify down as much as possible. So let's go ahead and do that. So it'd be 225 minus 30R plus R squared for the left side, and then simplifying down the right side, we end up with 25 plus 10R plus R squared plus 100 minus off 20 times five plus R cosine of CXY. All right, so let's simplify in terms of cosine of the angle. So with this first law of cosines, I end up with this equation, number one, I'm gonna call it, is cosine of CXY for that angle will be equal to two R minus five divided by five plus R. Once I simplify this entire portion down, this is what I end up with. All righty, so really can't solve for anything there, but what we can do is that we can use our second triangle, which would be X, C, Z, so the larger one, and still write it in terms of the law of cosines for this angle C, X, Y. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it in terms of the same way we did with the first one, C, X, Y, and then we're gonna relate those two angles together and solve for our radius. So let's go ahead and work on that. So the second one here I'll put in blue. Use, utilizing the law of cosines for the larger triangle of X, C, Z, we end up with this equation here. So we have C, Z squared is equal to C, X squared plus X, Z squared minus off two times C, X times, oh, times X, Z, and then cosine of that angle of C, X, Y, which you could also call it C, X, Z if you wanted to, but it's the same angle there, that angle that is right here along the X point or at the X point. So once again, we already have some values here that we determined earlier. So let's go ahead and just dump those into this cos law cosines equation that we have written. So we would end up with 10 plus R squared is equal to five plus R squared plus 15 squared minus off two times five plus R times 15 and then cosine of that angle of C, X, Y. So once again, let's simplify down as much as possible here. So we're gonna end up with 100 plus 20 R plus R squared is equal to 25 plus 10 R plus R squared and then plus 225, subtracting off 30 times five plus R cosine of C, X, Y. All right, and the same thing what we did with the first one, we are going to put this in terms of cosine of that angle. So the cosine of C, X, Y will be equal to 15 minus R divided by three times five plus R. <clears throat> oh, that does not look like an R. There we go. So simplifying this down, this is what we end up with. So what we can do is that we can correlate this right here with this cosine right here, since they are the cosine of the same angle. So we can set this portion, we can set these two portions equal to one another. So let's go ahead and do that. So we would end up with two R minus five divided by five plus R is equal to 15 minus R divided by three times five plus R. Alrighty. 
So now all we have to do is solve for r since r is our radius and it's our only unknown. So let's go ahead and do this. So using just some algebra here, we end up with 2r minus 5 is equal to 15r divided by 3. So then when we end up with 6r minus off 15 is equal to 15 minus r. So we have 7r is equal to 30. And then our radius is just going to be simply 30 over 7 inches. And the answer, the problem was looking for the diameter. So our diameter would just be 2 times that radius. So the diameter of that circle C would be 60 over 7 inches. Or if you want to round it off, it would be 8.571 inches in diameter for that orange circle. And that's how you would solve that particular problem. Most of it would just work out to be uh, law of cosines and then algebra once you figure out how to get it started. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a new math skill along the way. And if you want to test your abilities even further, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you've done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all that does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.